Ready? Hello and welcome to Rhythm and Pixels, a video game music podcast. This is episode 26-5 and we are your hosts. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm a knee breed. And every oh week God. we get together and listen to great video game music from all consoles and all generations. We pick a topic, um, we have some guests on, and we have a good time listening to some tunes. Now think of it as just listening to tunes with your friends. Um, who are in And if you ear. don't, you should start. You should start. Um, okay, so some top of the show stuff. Um, if you're listening to this episode the day it comes out, tomorrow is our live stream episode for Patreon members. Um, so that would be uh, 7.30 p.m. Eastern uh, on January 28th. And the topic is anxious music or crazy psycho music because Purnell loves that stuff. You better believe it. Yes. You bet you're a sweet bippy. Um, and then a month later, um, I'm going to say this now, and I'm, you'll, I'll have some... Uh, ads and all sorts of stuff coming out on social media and places. But February 20th, I am doing a, a, a charity uh, live stream um, for my birthday. So I'm turning old, years old, and I'm going to be playing Dance Dance Revolution for hours, raising money for uh, Project Hope and for the Delaware Center for Justice. So if you wanna, I like this birthday plan. That's <laughs> what you do with a birthday. So I'll be playing all day long, and I'll have a little. I have a little setup where you can uh, request music, request songs, um, and if I meet a certain goal, then my last hour will be the max three hundred power hour, and I'll just play. How it. does that even work? I'll just Won't play you it be over and over again. Uh, max three hundred at this point is not the hard song for now. Don't worry about it. One well, thing about it is like I play. I'll play pump and. There are definitely songs in there that aren't quote unquote hard anymore, but the BPM still has you on that reaction tip. You're like, oh crap, I gotta step now. Because like I feel like I could easily do max 300 now, whereas I, the last time I played DDR, I totally couldn't. Mm. But I'm positive I can do it now. Oh, I feel like I've done a pump. Easily, it's just a slowdown would be hard. But yeah, I'll, um, I'll be doing that in February. And I don't think there's anything else to plug right now. So right now, we want to talk about our guest on the show returning to dominate. The Rhythm and Pixels guest lineup. It is Chell Wong. What's going on, Chell? Ah! What's up, gamers? <laughs> gamers? It's me again. You can't get rid of me. I'm back. It's the sixth time I'm here, according to the save files that I have. <laughs> Bad fair. How you doing? I'm good. I'm not inebriated yet. <laughs> I won't be. I should mention why, though. At least some people are like, this is out of Oh, yeah, do it. Explain the story. Like, so... For those who are in the States or not, because I'm pretty sure it was international news, um, we had our election, um, and the swearing-in was the day before this recording, and I disliked our former president so much that I actually thought it was worthy to celebrate, so I drank some wine. The trade-off there is that I live alone, and I drank the wine alone, and wine doesn't last very long after you've uncorked it, which means I have to go through the entire bottle by myself before it goes bad. So I've been drinking wine for days straight. I didn't think Just you liked wine, second. which is crazy. Oh, I love wine. Merlot's my jam. Oh. Also ice wine, but after we had our earlier discussion, sweet stuff, it, ice wine isn't as good anymore, mm, but I still yeah. like it. Can you it. cook Merlot? I'm not... I don't really know wine so well. <laughs> I don't... I've never tried. Most of the time I hear people cook wine, it's usually sherry. Um, no, I throw, I throw I do throw red wine into like red sauces if I'm doing like a pizza uh -huh. sauce or something like that. Yeah, like whatever's red, whatever's in the house, whatever I'm drinking, honestly, just goes. Whatever's there. red, <laughs> I got this ketchup. Just put some put some merlot oh, in there. It's not a wine. I don't want to think about that. I need to dip these fries in something. Get this merlot. <laughs> oh, out. It'll be great. Dude, why? We're just gonna leave some. I ketchup need something out for my cereal. Merlot. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> put some merlot in your cereal. All right, Shell. So tell us, what are some projects that you're working on right now that you can talk about, and what is the weirdest thing you put on your cereal? Oh no, okay, so here's the thing. I don't remember the last time I was on, but um, I actually haven't had any official work to work on. That said, I do have... I should have asked you about this beforehand, I'm sorry. That's okay. I have a game that I worked on called Only Cans. It is... <laughs> it's, it's beyond the rating of P or G. It's... Not explicit, but I do recommend headphones. I did not voice act in this game. I did a little jingle, and they're 
will be a Steam... Maybe Steam release? I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Oh, Look at no. it this way. Look at it this way. Last week's episode, I had a track from a game that flat out I can't endorse on the show proper. But that doesn't mean the game doesn't exist. And if there's music for it, I have no qualms talking about it. And it's so, on the oh, Nintendo oh. platform. So I guess we got away with that. <laughs> Nintendo says it. It's okay. So well, are you proud of that jingle? Because that's what's important. Sure. Yeah, okay, great. <laughs> there yeah. it is. That's the original one I whipped up in an hour. Um, yeah, it's got like 2,000 downloads now on itch. Um, there's also something else that I don't think I can talk about yet, and I don't think it'll be ready to talk about by the time this podcast comes out, but dang, I don't know. Just follow my tweets at Cho Wong Audio. So. All right. You forgot the last question. What do you put on your cereal? Yeah, what's the oh. weirdest thing you put on your cereal? <sighs> the weirdest thing I put on my cereal? Chili oil. Gotta be chili oil. Honestly, honestly, though, I would try that because I love chili oil. Yes. The Chu Chow Chili Oil is the Lee Kum Kee brand. That's the stuff. That's the stuff. You can't go wrong with the You'll have to share a photo oil. of that at the end of the episode. My go-to has been this brand that I only just discovered whose name I can barely read. I don't know what the label looks like, but it's got like black. It's like It's really black. It's got sesame seeds in it. And it's got ooh. like a little bit of truffle oil or something. I don't know what ooh, the ooh, you gotta like. you gotta send me a picture of yours now. I gotta it's, see that. It's banging. It's really good. Black garlic All too. Right. It's just chili oil has it's more to chili oil than I ever thought possible, and I love it for that. Yeah, you love the you love the hot chili. hot stuff, but like when it comes down to like the flavoring of things, it's like you're you love uh, black garlic. That's right. The one thing I will say As that bugs should. me is that. And this is, as I've been noticing it more lately, I love sauces. I love hot sauces. I love condiments. But I have a hard time discerning what things I want to apply the condiments to. Like, I can make a chicken breast, right? And I'm sitting here looking at it, I'm like, you know, I've got like 12 sauces over here on the counter right now that could go great on this, possibly. Nah, I'm just going to put some pepper and some seasonings on it and just eat it <laughs> sauceless. Why would I do that? Clearly, I've got sauces that need to be used, but I'm just too anxious and weird about actually applying them to the products in my house. You know what we I use? Know. Them on? That's why I need to put it on cereal. Yeah, I we put ours on hash browns and potato latkes. Nice. Oh, that would be good. Yeah, potatoes are just. They're good for that. They sure they are. That's sure. why I always bug me when people are like, I use ketchup on my fries. Like, look, I have nothing against putting ketchup <laughs> on fries, but they're so much better. <laughs> You're missing better out on a options. world of things. I just don't like ketchup in general. Me too. So like, me too. Mm. It's bland. Like, it's literally just ketchup paste, which, don't get me wrong, I eat pasta just as much as the next guy, but you also notice that when you make pasta, you do more of the sauce than just drop tomato sauce and you throw more in there. You season it. Put some stuff in there. Ketchup, is it works, but... I almost never find myself wanting to use it in favor of something better. So this week's topic is condiments. <laughs> no. It's uh, not. Uh, uh, is that princess tom- Condiment music. Princess tomato in the music. salad kingdom for the many ever. <laughs> music you uh, There's also a tomato story that never came out in America, but it was made by Alpha Dream, the company that made Mario and Luigi, but then went bankrupt. Rest in peace, Alpha Dream. I missed that company. Oh, man, I'm so good. Why don't you mention that company? Because that's coming up later. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So um, the topic this yeah. week is mini games. I thought mini games would be a fun one to, to do again. We, we did it last last. That was time. the. F- was it the first? One? No, the first time I was ever on was Brass. The second time I was ever on was mini games, and so we're doing a redux I think of mini games. La- the last time I had like here. six tracks. Was like, no, mini it's game pilots part and stuff. <laughs> Oh my yeah, god! Pilots yeah. and stuff was the best one. You tried to flip back stuff. off. It was like, and the one before that was Husbandry, <laughs> <laughs> which like everyone that. should listen to because there are some banger of tracks in there. No, there's some interesting. And the stuff. fact that I had to look up the word before doing the actual <laughs> of tracks—that's what I like to have happen. Just come up with cromulent words and just embiggen my vocabulary with them, and then we'll go from there. All right, let's I cast embiggen on my vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> big in my vocabulary but let's listen to some tunes and then let's talk about some of these games um shell we're going to start with you um if you got the, if you got the list in front of you why don't you just pick one and we'll go with it uh well i'll go in order all right uh i have the first should i let you say it i don't know hey go ahead and announce announce it. no you should say it. oh yeah i guess i've been on here enough okay yeah. uh <laughs> oh how, how do you start it off it's like uh listen you're listening to Give uh, it your own flair. What would okay. you do? What's up, gamers? <laughs> <laughs> it's your girl, Chow Wong, and here we're going to be listening to the theme of minigame 
by Matoi Sakuraba and Shinji Tamra, and it's from Tales of the Abyss. That's right. And don't forget to smash that like button for Sakuraba. You're listening to the theme of minigame from Tales of the Abyss, composed by Motoi Sakuraba and Shinji Tamura. <laughs> Motoi's my, my man. There's some interesting sounds going on in that that tune. Like I like okay. the whistling is cool. I like the whistling, but there's some weird like mouth noises. I'm, maybe so. Pernell said that he didn't remember where the song was from, and I, I said it very briefly earlier. But I think the weird sound that you're hearing that sounds like it's. You, you said it sounded like a straw. I think it's crate because this tune happens in some the very dock. generic. Yes, at the dock. There's a very generic crate pushing mini game, and this song happens. And we're like, dang, this song's really catchy. Um, you know, I should, go- rem- I should remember that now because I was going to tell you something funny that ties into your earlier dialogue about trails in the sky. So now you're saying you're a completionist, you know, you're going to get everything, such and such. So. Yep. I never beat Trails of the Abrit um Trails of the um, Tales of the Abyss because uh Tales of the Abyss has a mini game run. There's two mini games in it. One being or side quests. One being the skeleton warrior battles where you have to fight skeleton warriors in various places in the I'm game. Sorry, the what? Did They're I like these skeleton battles where like you fight them and they have like different weapons at the end after you've beaten them all, you end up with like this really cool like bonus item. But you have to beat every skeleton item um, warrior, and if you miss one you're out of luck. But then the most annoying thing, which I only learned about, I learned about while leaving the dock when you land there again to go back to a town, is uh, there's this antline quest or something where you have to go to this guy in a desert town and you trade items with him and then you have to get through the entire roster of things he wants in order to get, again, another bonus in-game item. But there was a glitch where he would say, I want an orange gel, but he won't take it. Because if you didn't give him the orange gel at a very specific point in the game, it just blocks the quest on you. And when that happened, I was like, I don't want to play this game anymore. I quit. I just so, stopped playing the entire game. My sister and I played this game um, a long time ago. And this is before we started using, like, guides to make sure we didn't miss out on content. Because, like, we are we like to do a lot of side quests. And in Tales of the Abyss, there's a... There are, like, these two generals that are uh, from different countries, and they have a correspondence with each other, and maybe a romance. But we don't know, because we missed all of it! <laughs> we, got, we got, like, one part of it out of, like, six parts, and we're like, well, dang, I would have liked to see that. Um, so... Like, and I, I was gonna say also that um, the last time I was on, I told my sister which songs I picked, and she's like, "You didn't pick theme of minigame." So now that we have it back, I have to pick it just, <laughs> just for her. You fulfilled a long lost obligation. Yeah, not that she'll ever listen to this podcast, but she can definitely hear me through this wall. <laughs> well, you gotta tell her, like, you know, you might have a little bit of a surprise if you listen to the show, and she'll expect you to announce some money that you had you know, designated for. But in reality, it's just theme of minigame, just the which theme is also of good. Minigame. I'm tempted right now to just shout at my wall and just be like, Hey, I picked the game. <laughs> There's <laughs> no reason theme. not to, technically. But I will say, I always found, I do find it funny how there was a period where um, Square became notorious for releasing games with convoluted secrets, i.e. Final Fantasy X was one of the big ones, where the secrets were convoluted with the intent being to sell play online guides. Uh-huh. Um, I feel like the Tales games... Totally had their own thing going with that before Square got into the business of making things like that with the intent being to sell guys because there's a lot of mini games that have time cutoffs and very special mm. points of time you have to hit them and dialogue strings that they specifically at the right time and talk to a guy you've already talked to. Dude, so you wouldn't I mean, waste your time doing it again. 
Even before that, there was Super Metroid. Look at all those god dang secrets. Yeah, but you couldn't miss any. Like, Super oh, Metroid, you if you didn't find the energy tank, you could just come back and shoot all the walls until you see it later. Tails literally cuts you out. It's like, if you get on the boat before Make talking to the argue, guy at the bar, right. within the five minute window you get, you miss oh, the no side There's no hard, there's no like, in. Uh, there's no real life timer. It's just all in game stuff. That's what right? makes it worse. That's right? Worse. No, no. It, it, if it was if it was real life timer, I would lose my mind. I would absolutely go insane. <laughs> <laughs> That's Final Fantasy Nine. Well, this is a really fun, happy track for Pernell to lose his mind over. That's what I do. Yeah, yeah I, I, I still, I still, I still sometimes listen to the magical girl Elisa track that he posted last time because <laughs> oh, that yeah, was dude. a bop. Yes, it's so good. Whenever oh, someone God, tells so me they, they, they intend to pick up a. Uh, What's his face like, you know, with like Xanadu EX? I'm like, well, you get to listen to Magical Girl Lisa now, so mm -hmm. guess what? Yep. <laughs> you going for a treat. Will I ever get to Xanadu? Probably not. There's too many games in the world, and I will die before I get through my my backlog, which is a depressing thought, maybe. But uh, well, there's some really this, good music. If you're okay with games that could possibly be a little depressing, but at the same time, the narrative is really cool, there's a game I started playing called Amori. Which is pretty awesome in that regard. And it's How do you classic spell it? RPG stuff. It's called O M O R I. It's Amor. I'm pretty sure it's meant to be like off of Hikiko Mori. Um But it's a really cool little RPG that was probably inspired by Earthbound. But mm -hmm. it's it's pretty awesome. And it jumped my queue. So when a game jumps the queue, it says something. And I'm reviewing Ease 9 now, and it's I got, still want to play Omori more. It's got so. such an interesting style to the game, you know? Like, the, the art is, is so unique to it. Yeah, it's like, yeah. it's like crayon scribbles for, like, the enemies and stuff. It's just, it's really cool. And yet the game has some legitimately <clears throat> dark undertones to it, because mm. there's this narrative unraveling that is outside of the white space that you're in all the, for most of the game. The art is, is so not cute. not as colorful. It's not nearly as colorful as the world you're in, so I'm looking forward yeah. to seeing where it goes. So the art is so cute, and it says, Omori is a surreal psychological horror RPG maker game. <laughs> oh, it's by Omocat! That explains why the art is so cute. Okay. Oh, so you've heard of Omocat! Oh, yeah, no, I've, I've been following their art for a long time. I haven't, seen in, I haven't seen their stuff in a while, but, like, yeah, I'm, like, I'm tempted. But also, horror and I are not a good match. Mm. It's not horror in the sense of like Resident Evil y stuff. In fact, there's very few horror elements. It's just there's a dark narrative in there somewhere. And I've been playing for like twenty hours. I haven't gone oh, God, hours. Yet. Oh man. It's like twenty to thirty hours. It's short. Oh dang. That's not I mean, it's short for an RPG, but it's, I've been look, I've been trying to play through Paradise Killer and that game is like supposed to be like eight hours. I'm on hour seventeen. Like I love how everybody and their mom has played Paradise Killer and I'm just I got like, it for I... free, I think, from one of the devs. Thanks. Um <laughs> just let, hope the dev is listening. <laughs> Shell says thank you. I think this came up but, on our last episode, right? Some of the music did from Paradise Killer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It uh, came up because um I wanna say um the guy from Runaway Four was playing it. Yeah. All right, so no, no, hammock, no hammock. It was, was hammock. It was hammock because it was like it was hammock our buddy was cop show. All right, let's move on to some new music, some new games, and keep talking about some games that you are all playing right now, anyway. Uh, so, Pernell, I think you're next. Ooh, me? Yeah, oh, I like that. In that case, then, as my first track, I'm gonna go hard on the on the on the hammer here because as you guys teased me about having to clearly pick something from Yakuza like a dragon, I decided uh, to oblige that. So this is race cor Racetrack Course Theme 3 from Yakuza Like a Dragon. I couldn't figure out which person composed it, so you're getting them all. He did Nori <laughs> Shoji, Yuri Fukuda, Chihiro Aoki, and Saori Yoshida. We just call them the Dream Team, right? I like that. <laughs> but this OST, they deserve it. Holy crap.
Welcome back. You are listening to Racetrack Course Theme 3 from the game Yakuza Like a Dragon, composed by Hide no Shoji, Yori Fukuda, Chihiro Aoki, and Saori Yoshida. Yeah, as Rob joked earlier, he referred to them as a dream team. I think that's an accurate statement to make because Yakuza Like a Dragon has a very, very large OST roster. Wow. And nice. I have not heard a single bad track yet, and it covers so many different styles. So many different styles. This sounds like it's out of freaking Guilty Gear, and it plays during a Mario Kart minigame. I mean... Oh my god. You can't beat that. You really can't. It's just... It's glorious, man. I I, I love the OST of this game with a passion, and I've been banging out to it for the last, like, couple of weeks now. It's just so good. Um, I originally wasn't going to pick a track from Yakuza for the episode, but, again, since you guys were joking about how I would likely do it, <laughs> yeah. I ha- I'm glad you did because I decided to specifically seek out a good track from this. And it was either going to be this or the Hobo um, Aluminum Can Collection minigame. Mm. You've been telling either me that, like, worked. you've been playing this game, but really you've been playing all the mini games inside this game, just constantly doing that. Yeah, it's, like, it's, yeah. It, it's a killer, too, because what ends up happening is you boot this game up, and you're playing it, and you're progressing through the narrative and it's a very good story like it's not far-fetched aside from the whole main character having his like rpg mental fantasy thing running in his head but the actual narrative itself it's well also you bet you're fighting like machinery with like rpg moves but i digress anyway the point is it's a fairly straightforward narrative but it's a good one so you'll find yourself wanting to rush the next location because you want to see what's going to happen next. But at the same time, you could be playing Shogi right now. Whoa. And Shogi don't wait. Or <laughs> Shogi don't wait. That's that's a t-shirt Shogi right don't, there. I need to <laughs> don't play the Yakuza Saint. Like, I, know, I know I would love the Yakuza series. It's just a matter of one, I don't own any of them. And two, time. I'm, just do seven. Just do like I did. I own seven, huh? three. I, own I hear four, zero I is own. a good place to start. It, well, don't get me wrong, Zero is the place you're supposed to start, but I suck at that, and I never bothered to boot up any of the versions of the game I own in my house, but Yakuza 7, if you weren't aware, originally started out as an April Fool's joke Yeah, that it's they an decided RPG. to go with. Yep, and they were like, you know what, people like it. And it's I hear hard people to tell. love it. People, oh, they're, it's, they're, they straight up say, we're going to try and make it like an RPG. If, it, if people hate it and it's bad... Like, all right, sorry, we'll we'll change it back to the old ways, and then, and then it, it came out, and then people love it. The year it was easily my twenty twenty game of the year. Like I loved it. Um, but the thing about it is, like, I still have to this day don't know if they were actually secretly BSing everybody, and that they already intended to make it a JRPG. And then when they put the April Fool's joke out, it was sort of like a litmus test to see how people mm-hmm. would react to it. Yo, like, like well, fighting EX Lair. Wait, tell me more about that. I heard the title, but what was special about that game? Fighting EX Lair was announced on April Fools, and it was a fighting game that was made. It, it's it's like one. It's like the Street Fighter EX series, which had a bunch of random characters like Skullmania. Yeah, that was fun. Exactly, uh, and a couple other people like Darun Meister. Um, <laughs> and so, the game was revealed on April Fools and people w- literally weren't sure if it was real or not. And I think I think it was also like a litmus test where like are people interested? Cuz if it's if it's just a joke, it's just a joke. Like but if people are interested like you know, we can make this a real game. We can make this a real game. And it's like a looks like a you know, comparatively a, a significantly lower budget fighting game compared to like Street Fighter and Tekken. Mm. But um you know, it, it had its time. It had a little bit of time to shine. I don't think I don't think it's seen really, really developed for it. But I think people are really happy that it existed. Yeah, I thought it looked pretty I, cool. That's not something I, I got into yet, but it's definitely a style that I like. It's two D in three D world, three land. Yeah, that's a question <laughs> it's we're a asking 2. both 5 of you. When I think game. about it because yeah. a thought crossed my mind when you were describing, you know, fighting your Slayer, and I'm not qualified to answer this because I don't play enough of them. Um, there are a lot of fighting games that hit the market, and at its core, fighting games are essentially one versus one, beat the tar out of the other person, knock them out, get multiple rounds in, a, yeah, in, team in sequence, versus and team. you win the match. Yeah. But there's only room for a certain few at the top. So what do you feel are the qualifications that make a fighting game particularly special as opposed to just being another game in the heat? Do you want me to say my personal criteria? Yeah, yeah like- it's a personal question. My personal, um, so if I were to say my three favorite fighting games to watch, play, and play, it would be 
Melee, Tekken, and Guilty Gear uh, Rev 2 right now. Um, I hope, I really hope Strive is good. A lot of people are worried. I, I hope it's good. Strive looks they sick. Can't mess Anyways, it up. They're not going to mess um, it up. The reason why I like these games are one, the barrier of getting into the games is honestly a lot lower than people think. Oh, yeah. People have been playing Super Smash Brothers for years. You have that You have that friend that does Kirby up, 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 down B. You know, you That's have that me. friend that does that. I'm that right. friend. Yeah, you're that friend. <laughs> ha! You're toast. <laughs> Anyways, so there's like, honestly a significant lower level uh, barrier of entry for like Smash Bros. Because, I mean, it, I, like it's, it's a party game too. Um, mm-hmm. Tekken, I went on a date and I played a bunch of Tekken drunk with a friend. Uh, I wasn't a friend, but I was I played a bunch of Tekken with, a, with someone on a date and it was at this barcade and and we were maybe some tipsy and it's the kind of game that you can literally button mash and you do some cool stuff like, oh man, I just did this crazy attack and it's 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 really fun. Ow, I hit my hand. But um, <laughs> it's also, um, and, then, and then Guilty Gear honestly has like a really nice uh, flexible combo system where you can um, have like the Gatling system where like okay every character has like a universal combo system where like I'm gonna go from punch to kick to slash to heavy slash. Um, there's certain things that are kind of universal where like I'm gonna do uh, 6p and that's gonna be like an anti air and it's got some like a little bit of armor to it. Um, there's there's just like, like a lot of good universal systems to the things. Um, so so the, the barrier entry is like, good. So are the, you saying like the idea of like every character has a specific combo style? That can be applied to any character that functions in a specific way. Like there is everybody a, can do the six punch thing. There, there are some combos that mostly work with everyone, to my knowledge. But there are obviously better combos. So if you main a character, you know what's a better thing to do. But if you like to dance around the roster like I do, like if I go to Street Fighter Five and I decide to hit the random and I get, um, yeah, I don't know, like I get the, who, who, Lucia. I don't know anything about her. Yeah. I don't know how to play Poison. I don't know how to play Lucia. I don't know how to play Seth. I don't know how to play. So different. They're all so different. And I stopped playing. Exactly. I can play three characters in the game. And that's that's not true. I can play more than three. But the point is, is that um, you don't really know things. You don't know what links into what. And you're like, oh, I hoped it was going to be this. Um, But like, so the barrier of entry of getting in is is not too bad. The ceiling is incredibly high on all three of these games. There's an insane level of movement. There's insane. There's there's a huge variety of movement options there's a, a ton of options for offense as well as defense these games all have a feeling that there are things that are that make characters good but there is always something that you could have done there's nothing that is so bs that you're like mm, you no know. one's broken and it's not about yeah. balance it's not about balance of like the game because i feel like they were trying that way too hard with street fighter 5 because <laughs> yeah, because you can have an unbalanced game of characters, but if you're just a bunch of people who are like you know casually you know trying to figure the game out and get better, like if someone's like well, spamming something, someone's gonna figure out how to get around it, you know. So actually, I was gonna get to the third point. The third point is that there is a diverse and relatively balanced cast, mm-hmm. but they are all very different. People want, people think they want balance. People think they want. Oh, right. but here, here I am back in my fighting game BS. People <laughs> think. <laughs> think they want balance but the the only truly balanced game is a game where there's one playable character if there's one playable character of course there's balance but then the point of the fighting game isn't the balance the point of the fighting game is like the fundamentals right but you look at guilty gear you see potemkin he's enormous he is so big he has certain limitations he cannot air dash in a game that is a that is very air dash heavy um he cannot run um there are other characters that have multiple jumps. I can't remember who. Um, I use Noel Vermillion because she's oh, no, 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 she's no, no, from Blaze Blue. Yeah, Blaze Blue. I caught myself. Ah! I mean, I also like Blaze Blue, but it's I also got May a bunch of weirdness Bridget. to it. So you know, Blaze and Bridget. Um, there's a there's a bunch of um, oh yeah, you know, and and Bridget. Um, I miss I miss Bridget, but there's a bunch of characters. So like one time, I think it was one Evo top eight for Guilty Gear had nine different characters. How cool is that? Eight mm. different people played, nine different characters were used. That's beautiful for a viewer to see, for a competitor to play, for a ge- for a person who actually plays. That's just, it means that the game doesn't get stale. Now, as a Melee player, I know you might be like, what, but- I was what? like, take that Fox Final Destiny. Yeah, so I was like, but chill, what about Melee? And how you, you just said it was diverse. Now, um, to be perfectly honest, it is not perfectly balanced. I will acknowledge that half of the cast is not very usable. 
but mostly is a third of cast is almost never used and there's like a pocket of like counter picks and like rare characters that you still see some people who are like mid-tier heroes um and if you look at the top 10 i think i have to go to the fox falco chic puff um uh, pikachu yoshi um that's, that's still a fairly decent that's count. Six, that's at least six characters in the top... Oh, uh, Ice Climber. So yeah, there's there's at least six different characters in the top ten. Um, in terms... Of, wait, hold on. Did I forget? Fox? Uh, uh, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> anyway, yeah. The point is, the point is, is that if you look at the top ten, the top ten players in the world, you have two people who, granted, them alone carry their, enti- their character by far. Axe is like the only Pikachu in the top 100, I think. Uh, Amsa is the only Yoshi in the top 100, but both of them are top 10. They're both incredible. And so, there is actually still a wide diversity of characters. Now, the majority of the characters you see will be one of four. Um, but that said, there's, there's still, there's still some, oh man, I forgot about Falcon. Anyways, the oh. point is, <laughs> my, my criteria is, it's easy to get into. Yeah. It's, um, and by, and by, in my opinion, by definition, fighting games are like easy to understand what you're looking at. Not as much for melee, not but con- like you see, you see two health bars. You see that guy getting hit. You see that guy's health bar going down. That's you, you can put A and B together. Um, it's easy to under, uh, It's easy to get into. It's got an incredibly high ceiling. Um, so low floor, high ceiling, and diverse. Um, a diverse cast that has good representation across the competitive scene. Yeah. Wow, that was a long rant. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> I, I watched a tournament not too long ago. Um, who hosted it but it was all it's uh, the game footsies which is literally two, oh. stick fi- two stick figures who look exactly the same and have the exact same move set but you are playing footsies you can all you, you kick or you um you throw a knee or you do like a little like a little low um like a low sweep and those moves kind of cancel each other out so it's almost like a rock paper scissors and you're spacing each other out and it's just it was fascinating i really enjoyed watching it I need to see this footsies tournament. Footsies was cool. It was like it was some, some charity tournament that it was done by um, uh, one of the famous like Street Fighter and Tekken um, announcers, James Chen. No, it was um, James, ta- not James Chen. It's a guy who's always with Tasty Steve. Um, oh, Say Jam, Say Jam, yeah. <laughs> Tasty Steve. Walking Yo, I met Tasty Steve in real life at a Paxis once. He's a cool guy. I hope I, you know what. Like I, I, I see these personalities and I'm like, oh man, I hope they're cool. Because you know, I hope they're Pringles. <laughs> I hope they're Pringles. <laughs> because um, because we all know how PogChamp turned out. Uh, uh, I used we, to watch the show. I know, me too. I was so into it, but we I all know that Ma- Mike Ross was the hero of everything. Uh, but anyway, I'm, uh, I'm still cross I mean, counter with Mike Ross. <laughs> yeah, cross Mike. It's just counter. Broly Legs. Broly Legs is, is an incredible fighting game player. Yes. For those of you who don't know, Broly Legs is a player who is, um, I think paraplegic is no that is that the right word? Uh, yeah, paraplegic. Paraplegic. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So he is in a wheelchair and, um, he plays Street Fighter with his mouth. He has his his hands. I don't think can actually fully hold the controller just because yeah. of how his body is, and so he grips the joystick with his mouth. And he can use some of his fingers on his right hand, and I think his left hand is just to stabilize it. And he has a he has a um, an interview from Cross Counter, and he tweeted out. At this point, I was only interviewed by Mike Ross. <laughs> so oh, wow. that was funny to see. That's so heartbreaking. Rob's like, I have so much to edit later. No, this is all staying in. This is content, oh, heck yeah. everybody. This is gamer content. All right. Also, I remembered I did have something to plug. Should I wait until the end of the show? That's or just the end do of the show now. Or, 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 or we'll do it on, on the next break. But you know what? This is good because my, my, my voice isn't great. And I'm like, you know what? Let's let you two talk for a while. <laughs> I can um, ramble. <laughs> That's a risky venture there, friend. You, <laughs> Rob cuts in only to be like, and we're moving on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shut this down. Awesome. Here we go. So. Okay, Pranel, guess what? We're not getting out of an episode without hearing something from Final Fantasy X Part 2. Oh, well, oh it's a little man, different. It's two? Oh, but it's a place that's also in the first game a bit. Yeah, it is. This is the Thunder Plains from Final Fantasy X Part 2, <laughs> composed by Noriko to- Matsueda and Takahito Iguchi. Here we go. Time to erase the sign. Zero days. Zero days. <laughs> Zero days. <laughs> you know, I may not talk about Final Fantasy X, but I dream about it.
This is the Thunder Plains from Final Fantasy X Part Two, composed by Nariko Matsueda and Takahito Iguchi. Um, and we were just talking about. Well, Pernell was getting on a little rant about how much he hates about the dress spheres you know, thing. Dress well, so, well, first I asked, is Ten Two a good game? I thought so. I, I've not played it. No, no. Like, we we had talked earlier about how there's there's like um you can't you, you there's a game you couldn't complete or like you're if you miss something you missed it forever. And when as mm-hmm. you play Ten Two. Um, you actually have like a little meter in your save file that's like how much the percentage of how much you've completed the game. And even if you tried to do everything, if you miss like one guy to talk to for no reason, you miss that hundred percent. And I think I remember Pernell getting really upset about that years ago. I gotta Google how long this hundred percent and ten two speed run is. It was mainly a partly. It wasn't so much that I got upset about it from a place. I never got to really get too deep into it. It was more like the thought that if I wanted to go for the perfect ending, that was a factor I'd have to consider. I was like, well, screw that noise. I'm not even going to get myself started on it. But um, uh, the the uh, issue with the game is just that we were saying uh, per- people I had a lot of issues about. You know, you're playing dress up. It's just being when you play dress up, like Russell Rob was saying. And and my thought process like. A lot of the games are cool when you do the whole dress up thing, and that you get a new class, and you know they're gonna get a cool outfit when they get the class. It's like I want to see what they look like now. They got this cool new armor, or this cool new class, or this new transformation. That's all dress up. Just because the game doesn't tell you it's called dress up, and they're not Dude. called dress fears, doesn't mean you're not dressing up. So, oh, there are some yeah. in this game. Real quick, the world record. There's only three entries for Ten Two's 100% run. It's 18 hours, 30 minutes, and 47 seconds. I can process. respect that because I wager that means they had to do, cut all the corners to get to that point. Either, yeah. Uh, oh, this is this is time without loads, which is fair. But um, anyways, dress up is fun. I play Animal Crossing. Yeah, man. Like, like so, like every character can be like a thief or a magician or something like that. And when you change, like everyone's got their own different outfit for that class, which is really oh. cool. And their abilities all change. Yeah. And it's again very fast paced because you might find yourself switching classes like one round after another because you need to get a very specific battle plan running. It's legit. It is very much legit. So, and this I like one, the fact that they play with yeah. that. This is this mini game. There's like a few mini like mini games in quotation marks in Final Fantasy X too. So this was like all these little um, like lightning rods have to be recalibrated or something so you don't people don't get oh, murdered geez. or killed. And you have to like hit buttons in a specific order and then you have to do it backwards and remember all the buttons. It is incredibly oh. frustrating. But this music I'll take is it over dodging lightning bolts. Yeah, right. Um, and uh, which is optional, Pernell. Optional. No, it's not. Hundred <laughs> percent completionist. You have never hundred percent of ten. And it's Lulu's weapon, Lulu. Yeah, you know, can't you... just not get that. I haven't done that yet. I'm telling you, man. The the, the Blitzball game broke me. I just can't play the game anymore. As it should, because yeah. I would ignore Waka's weapon for that very reason. <laughs> Oh, the one day I'm gonna I have thought a few Blitzball was just... popular. I thought people liked Blitzball. Some people no. do. Th- some people do. There's, there's I actually a... saw a list where they were claiming that was one of the best mini games ever contrived, and I want to go to the guy's house and yell at him. It's for like it, it is like bold. a sports game. It is a full on weight like 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 RPG sports game where you can like recruit players all over the world. And everyone's got different stats. It's and it plays, based it's like a football manager. Yeah, it's like a football it's manager big... game, but you play it at the same time. But the only way I could get through it was by glitching the system out and just. Waiting, playing it for a week. So you're I bad. The, the way to get through was just to jet shot everything. Um, you have to get to that point. So you have to wait everybody out. You have to get one point, and then you gotta hide. <laughs> it's, it's, so ima- imagine like a football game where everyone, like one guy, is like super powered and like does a touchdown, and then like for the rest of the game they're all like hanging out like in the corner of the field, <laughs> and, every, and no one knows forward, where they went. Yeah. Forward pass to center, holds it, holds it. That's essentially what I did. Sets his reference. I That's just right. like turned the sound off and listened to like podcasts and stuff and just <laughs> left it on. I'm like, I'm going to do this. <laughs> That's um, how you do it, man. Just get through it. And yeah. then get Waka's ball when you just, which makes you play slots and you just don't feel no, like No, Waka, Waka throws a basketball at people so hard they explode. And that's why the game is cool. <laughs> That's rad. <laughs> that's his. And that's he's his voice by Bender. It's like, yeah, people have like swords and, and like spears and he's got a basketball. I love it. I don't know why I love it. It's bl- actually, Rob, that's blitz ball. He has a blitz ball. Underwater, I don't know, basketball, something or other. <laughs> Robert, <laughs> he's got a blitz ball. Uh, actually. Uh, <laughs> Christ. I'm so glad that like Chell's here because I couldn't, I, I, if I told you, Purnell, who's that guy who talked next to Tasty Steve, you would say I was crazy and you would find another shirt. 
the heck a tasty Steve is. I'm, I'll be blunt. He's uh, a great commentator, and he covers a lot of fighting games, and uh, he's been yeah. really into Tekken lately, and to be fair, that's a good game to get into. Yes. I, 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 sick. I, I love how hype he gets. You, you need a you need something yeah, to get into. Yeah, because he's sick. That's, that's, that's why I like when it comes to, like, uh, the... the uh, the, the, the Twitch type stuff and it's been a topic of discussion for me lately where I feel like no matter how I slice, no matter who I'm talking to about doing Twitch, I think the end result always becomes you need a hype man. You need a hype man to because if you're playing it by yourself, mm -hmm. you're just like, oh, I'm moving. Yeah. And then if you got the chat You need an the analyst corner, and you need a hype cast. Yes. Like you need someone to yell at you like, what are you doing? Guess who's Check got two brain mushroom. cells and can shout. <laughs> yeah, like, it's, if I'm playing Crash Bandicoot is one thing. If I'm playing Crash Bandicoot and getting admonished by the guy next to me, that's entertainment. If we can get on, uh -huh. like, uh, like, a weekly schedule, like you and I and, and Shell and some other guests, we could just, like, uh -huh. you can play a game and we'll just yell at you the whole time. Oh, my God. Honestly, that sounds fun, actually. <laughs> you'd like also, Robbie Reby, I bet, Shell. Uh, who? You'd like watching me play Robbie Reby, I bet. Ro what? We'll look it up on the next break. Is that what, a Robbie person or a game? It's a game. It's a game. But I have nothing to do with it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, Rob would play it. Rob could actually probably uh, play it because he played Bullet Hell games back in the day. Yeah, oh, jeez, they're Bullet Hell games. Platform. Yeah, well, I stream on platformer. Tuesday nights. Rob has tuned into my stream on Tuesday nights. Oh my god, my 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 most recent stream was only one hour long because I had a commitment at 8 p.m. and I start at 7, and so normally I stream with my friend Tiffany Otto on my Twitch channel at Chelwan Audio. Uh, but, um, do 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 Oh yeah, so normally I play Super Mario Sunshine, but this, this past week I streamed myself playing Melee for an hour at the same time as playing Pokemon Go, because recently I got into it because my one of my partners got me into it. And so I was like playing Melee, but also trying to catch Pokemon at the exact same time. So... It was as much of a mess as you'd expect, but honestly, a lot more successful than you'd think. <laughs> Which game was more successful? Honestly, Melee. <laughs> melee. Really? Honestly, Melee. There are some people who are just... Like, I'm okay. I'm not amazing. I'm okay. But I won, I won some games. I'm like, I'm playing Luigi. <laughs> and I'm Luigi also Rocky. full hopping, wasting Ultra Balls. Getting angry at the Pokemon that keep jumping out, and I can come back from this, and then I win. Like, what? And so. I did that while throwing exceptional throws, suckers! Oh no, I, I my phone is, is sideways because I, I have it on a on a little pop oh, outable stand picks. thing. Yeah, one of those little kick out pop out things, and so I have it on its diagonal sideways, and I'm just trying to flick it, and of course all my <laughs> all my ball throws go, they lean right, like. Oh, those it's are like trick how, shots, you see. The trick shots, yeah. Yeah, except the, the trick shots are only good if you throw it spinning right, <laughs> but you throw it left. You went right Otherwise, high, it just goes you right. You should have went real low. <laughs> you gotta zag while you zig, but if you just zag without the, the zig, it's just gonna go right. And then the ball just zips, and then you got nothing. Zagreus. <laughs> That's a game I've been playing a lot, too. I have 130 hours in Hades. Everyone's playing Hades. I'm it's so behind. Oh, okay. Am I allowed to get sidetracked, Rob? Um, hold on. Let's play some more music and then get sidetracked. <laughs> we got, we got, we got some music to get through. So, um, what's your next track? And then we'll talk about oh, some Hades because you know we're gonna talk about okay. Hades anyway. Oh, okay. So my next yeah. track. Uh, all right. Yeah. Super Paper Mario, Mansion Patrol, Naoko Mitome, and Ch Chika Segawa. That's a shame. She's like, you know, I'm not all that enthusiastic enough. Oh, what's the up? song's a bop. The song's a bop. Song's the game's bopping. fine. The game's fine. <laughs> <laughs> As track rules, miles, some crap.
This is a Mansion Patrol. Man Mansion Patrol from Super Paper Mario, composed by Naoki Matomi and Shikasegawa. So, this is a bop, like as you said. I would say so. It's got some crazy. I was tapping my foot to it's got the some whole crazy, thing. like minor, like almost atonal section in, in the middle there, which is kind of crazy. Um, but I like it. I like it a lot because it's unexpected. But I also like the um, the little chords at the beginning. They're like do do do, kind of polka ish. Polka ish. I don't quite remember even polka ish. Like Super Paper Mario was like that. It was the first of the Paper Mario games that completely jumped ship on what everyone thought was going to be the established format. Mm. And uh, yeah. uh, it's, I it's okay. The story. I love the story, but the gameplay lost me. So I finished the game and then sold it. Was that a DS what? game or a, a? No, 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 no. That's that's Sticker Star and it's garbage. Um, <laughs> it is. Super Paper sad. Mario is the one on the Wii, and it still had the heart of a Paper Mario game. It mm -hmm. still had a lot of the character and a lot of the charm and a lot of the writing. Uh, gameplay wise, it was it was it a little Murphy, lackluster. Though. It didn't have yeah, the Murphy. There were there were some there was some kind of clunkiness to the gameplay, and honestly, it just didn't. It, uh, I think a lot of the game just didn't resonate as hard. But that said, still it still has some charm. Sticker Star, however, has no Paper Mario soul in it. It looks like Paper Mario. That it sounds like Paper actually. Mario. Actually, that's not true because every Paper Mario has a different soundtrack. So the sound, the music is good. I will say the music is good. Everything else about it is bad. <laughs> I would say, if game. anything, I feel like the I feel like the 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 the, the atmospheric soul was there. It was the gameplay that fell flat. Like when <laughs> Sticker Star came out, I bought it because I, of course, I did. But all the reviewers were just smashing it. Like they were like, "This is a terrible it's game." Bad. Da -da -da. So I was just like, ignored it. I was like, you know, I'm not going to play right now. I'll just go play something different. I'll come back. And I didn't There's play no Sticker Star it. until last year, for the very first time. I was like, okay, it's been like 70 years since the game came out. Maybe I'll be able to wash my mouth out of the t with the, from the taste <laughs> of you know bad reviews and appreciate it for what it is. And it was still bad, and the main reason why it's still bad. is that they made battles pointless. Like, you get into a fight... Oh my you know, god, do you want me to rant about Super Paper Mario's battle... Or, sorry, Sticker Star's battle system? Because I can It was rant. a bad system. It was just like really bad. Like, it was cool if they had it set the battles mattered. But do you, you want me to talk resources about boss fights? To gain resources to get the same <laughs> resource that you spent back. But you usually burn through more resources then you get resources to replenish them with it's let me tell stupid. you about boss fights let me tell you about boss fights <laughs> boss fights are a load of garbage because you need a specific 3d real world object for each boss fight but the they fan. don't tell you which one before you get into the fight and if you don't have it good luck because sometimes you just end up in a slog fight of using your normal attack but guess what because it's sticker start you have a finite number of normal attacks you have several pages and there's like a bit of that like you know like the the fitting all of your inventory item mm -hmm. things like re4 mm -hmm. I, I, everyone always mentions i still need to play that game but it's like Chris Salas, but with Sticker Star. Yeah, but <laughs> at some point you're like, oh, I can't hurt this enemy unless I do this specific thing with a baseball bat. How was I? <laughs> so I, I didn't know about it until connections after the fight. For you? Like, the baseball bat for the boss didn't seem like a logical thing to use. But merely if you didn't have it, of course it wouldn't be logical. You don't know you had the Oh, action, yeah, you know, that's the thing. If you use a 3D object sticker, or here's the thing, if you use any sticker, it's gone. Which And also that meant you had to find a number of text. And they would drop you like the itty, itty bitty bitty weak stuff. Um, but um, the 3D objects, if you wanted to get it back, you had to go to the specific level that you found it and then get it and then turn it into a sticker and then fit in your sticker book and then go back right to that boss fight. <laughs> it's so <laughs> stupid. And the final boss fight, the final boss fight is the worst event of this because you have to have like you three specific- You got that specific... far before giving it up? <coughs> I'm a completionist. How many times do we have to talk about this? We've talked about like three JRPGs on the show so far, and how many times have I mentioned it? No, that's not even true. We've talked about four, five JRPGs. This five JRPGs. I am a completionist. You know how hard it is for me to get through, for me to finish games. And the answer is, it's not hard. It just takes a long time. <laughs> it just takes a long time. And so then I played Super Paper Mario because I didn't have too many games on 3DS, and it's just so bad. And I beat it. And I got basically everything. We're and noting, I, by the way, I'm the one drinking wine, and <laughs> Shell has not had a touch of Kraken. Just point that out. Uh huh. Point that out. Maybe I should. Maybe no, I should. You should. You know, Maybe I should pop it open. Yeah. <laughs> I know you should. But I will say, 
that was my general summary thought, which is that the gameplay could have been more fun if they made it so that battles matter and that the stickers were required made more logical sense that you had to acquire them to even use them. It was just not good. But Super Paper Mario was a little different. It was like it was just like the idea of them saying we're going to try to fuse Mario platforming elements with the hit point system that we instigated from the Paper Mario normal game. So you do a normal Mario stomp, but your stomp did two hit points of damage to a Goomba. It was weird. Um, it was enough to get you through the game, but it didn't it didn't last long enough. But this mini game track, do you remember where it plays? This is for the Mansion Patrol, which is a mini game where you use the Wii Mote as a as a pointer instead of as a controller. So you use the Wii Mote as a pointer, and you got to click on the booze as they get closer to you. It's kind of like um, okay, that sounds like fun, like red light, green light. But you don't want them to get to you if they if you basically if they have green light for too long, they'll scare Mario. Yeah, yeah. you you just gotta you just gotta shoot. <laughs> My mom asked me if I was okay. <laughs> <laughs> I need to tell her. Got the G- just... She got the JRPG jitters. Don't mind. <laughs> Everything's cool. That's all. Everything's cool. Just JRPGs, mom. Just, just all cool. Um, like, so, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. It's, it's just a very, very basic light gun game. <laughs> but the tune's a bop. The tune's good. Oh, it, tune's real, I told really you. Good. Toe tap and magic over here. I was content. Pernell, Pernell, you got a tune to match this one? Well, it's not going to make you tap your toe, but it will make you smile from head to toe. <laughs> anyway, the point is, mm-hmm. um, this track comes from the game Clubhouse Games 51, yeah. and it's called Six Ball Puzzle, composed by Toshiki Ida. Let's see how it matches up against the Patrol of Manchinton. You're listening to Six Ball Puzzle from the game Clubhouse Games 51 on the Nintendo Switch, proposed by Toshiki Ida. Funny part about this is that originally I was going to pick Mancala for the show, which is the mini game that I played the most since getting into this product. But on one of my loop listens, I didn't have time to go back and switch because I was doing work. And then it switched over to the next track, which ended up being this one, Six Ball Puzzle. And I was like, I can't in good faith not pick this one over Mancala because this thing is a bop. <clears throat> and it's funny because the track itself plays over one of the most frustrating mini games in Clubhouse Games 51 as far as I'm concerned. Hmm. I looked it's, it up to, to it, see what it was again, and it, it says it's, people say it's pretty popular. Oh, it's not that it's a bad game. It's just hard. Like, it's a, <clears throat> it's a block, it it's a, um, block dropping what? mini game. Six block, it's called Six Ball Ball Puzzle. So the idea is that it's like balls falling, like blocking a falling block puzzle, and you balls fall in sequence of like pyramids of three, and you rotate it, and then when you land, when it lands, the balls will cascade into place and then sit on and sit where they land. 
but the way you clear blocks out, it's not the usual, like, get three in a row or, you know, just matching colors. You have to get formations, too. So, like, one oh. might be a honeycomb formation with what? an actual marble in the middle empty. And That's pulling cool. that off is surprisingly tough for me because that basically means you're intentionally leaving a spot blank and then having the marbles cascade in a way that they don't fall or they don't completely flush. It's frustrating to me. It kicks the crap out of me. It is probably one of the hardest block dropping puzzle games I've ever personally played. Oh. And I play all kinds of them. I play tons. I you play are, Puyo, man. You are into the into the block puzzles. Hardcore. Yeah, like it's, block it's rough. But like with that said, Clubhouse Games has 51 games in it. There is literally something for everybody. I was I got to a point where I was playing Mancala for lunch break every day for like two weeks. Like it's that's it's so real, and the music color. is a large part of what helps that. It's good atmospheric music for your games. Mm. You should play it. Michelle should get it. <laughs> Time and money. Time and money. I have. There's so many Switch games I want. I want Mario Kart. I want. I want Hyrule Wars. I want the new Hyrule Wars. I want to play. What were the things. other ones? Uh, 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 I haven't played Odyssey and the and the 3D Mario one okay. with the cat. Okay, 3D World. That takes precedence over everyone you just named. But otherwise, Clubhouse. <laughs> you want to get them for me? You want you want to treat me to some video games that I don't have <laughs> let's time see. for? Let's see how let's see how life good. Let's see how life treats me in the next two weeks. I don't have time. That's why I do. That's why maybe I, Mario I, Odyssey will show up in your inbox. I pick one game and I just I just play it, and that's the game I play. You know, and if I uh-huh. need, well, I what's need what's that, your like, current what's your current? I am game working through play. Persona Five right now. Oh boy, that's what that's also a BB game. Yeah, I'll be out of for Royale or not? Not. Because uh, the We're not vanilla. the Persona Five Vanilla was on sale, and I was like, "Yep, time to play." Of course, it's on sale. <laughs> I mean, admittedly, I mean, while, while World does exist, you're not really hurting by not playing World because Five and its Prime was just good too. Like I never played Royal, mm-hmm. even though I have it downstairs. Mm-hmm. Like, what, what palace are you on? Oh, um, I am close. I know I'm closing in on the fourth. So I just I finished the third. I spent like an hour, two hours because doing nothing but like making my guy um you know go on like buddy dates with all of his friends and go to work <laughs> and like do nothing uh, h- hanging out with his like crazy uncle who owns the the, the bar or the, Why, he's uh, awesome. the cafe i like him a lot um but yeah because oh. the the last the third palace i finished it so fast i had all this time left over so i was like oh, i'll just do whatever um so be careful with your uncle because his social link blocks at a certain point and doesn't advance till after the fourth palace. Oh, okay, that's good to know. Because um, I have hung out with him a few times. It's like you hang out with a friend and they're like, "Yeah, you're all right. <laughs> you had <laughs> you had a good time. You didn't learn anything." And the game tells you your social link is not going to improve. Um, Anytime soon. I wish there was like an app for that. You know. There's hey, hey Pernell, want to hang out? And Pernell looks on his phone. Uh, Rob's social link is not going to improve this time. Like, mm-hmm. uh, how about next week, Rob? Um, oh, I I played that game very smart. I didn't FAQ it per se to give me the optimal route, but I did make sure to make sure that I picked the right answer to get the maximum points when I did a chat yeah. with someone because time is precious. I, I had the Prunella FAQ because I didn't know what that what I was doing with those bosses, and I was like, I, I, I haven't played an RPG that wasn't Final Fantasy X in so long. I was like, I've had to work out a battle in ages. I, know. <laughs> I did not expect this entire podcast to be about JRPGs. Hey, mini games. I yeah, mean, that's what we're sidetracking a mini game podcast. If that's not kids, man, I don't know what tons, it is. Tons. Yeah, I, uh, I haven't done the uh, there's like a there's like a batting cage mini game in that one. I haven't done a whole lot of. Um, a lot of them you probably will never do. Like I, I honestly skipped the batting did cage you do the entirely crossword? because did you, again, time is precious. Did you do the crossword puzzle. Nope, I didn't even know there was one. <laughs> yeah, it's right there in the cafe. Every day you walk right past it. And I was like, oh, what's that book do? And it's like, it's a crossword puzzle. I'm like, yeah, oh, I'm going to do some puzzles. Like, so like, I, I enjoy a crossword, but like in person, like, why? No, why? If it like, just, are you really just trying to pad it. your... Yeah. Well, no, the problem uh, is if it, if, it, if it resulted in a benefit... Is there a benefit? Get do you get a bonus else? for finishing every crossword? You probably get bonuses to like well, your the, character stats. That's the thing. That's but what, you get that other way. That's what they're, I'm discovering they're doing in Persona. Is like you have these character stats of like charm and and um, and, and guts and stuff like that. But all, <laughs> guts. All, all that is doing is unlocking um, the ability to create new social links with other people, which gives you the ability yep. to 
upgrade your personas during the battles. And I think I think I know where you're going with this, Chell, but there's like there's a thing with especially with JRPGs that are not respecting the player's time. And like the dialogue is just a nope. little too long. Or these cutscenes which are really cool at first, now you're watching for the fiftieth time and I am I'm, I'm and if I want to sit down and play a game, I have to set aside like a few hours to play. And I can only do yep. that like once every couple weeks. So I'm gonna be playing Persona Five until I'm grayer than I am now. But the important part is you'll see the end of it. I will see the end of it eventually, but you know, who knows? You know, I'm gonna go back and like just play Tetris and just be like, "Hey, Rick, I got really good at Tetris. What are you doing?" You're like, "I, I got a honestly, backlog of like games on my PS6." I can honestly say that may be like one of the one of the ben- one of the few benefits I got to like my social status right now, where it's like, oh, "I'm not seeing anybody. I'm not doing anything." But if you were to say, "Perno, how many games are you playing right now?" I'm like ten, <laughs> ten different yeah. games mm. that I just jump between. Play Ease Nine. I'm playing freaking Omori. I'm playing Yakuza Like a Dragon. I'm playing Dead Cells. I'm playing Hades. I'm playing Lost Child. I'm Speaking playing everything. Every Speaking. game. Playing Speaking Dicey Dungeons. Yeah, we had talking uh, about. We got that. Speaking of Hades, play chill. Pyre. <laughs> got him. You got got. Guess got what? Him. This is now. This is now a Pyre podcast. Everybody who's played <clears throat> Pyre, everybody who's played Hades, you like Hades? Play Pyre. Pyre's <laughs> incredible. Let me tell you, let me tell you, I love every super giant game. That's not a shocking factor. I love them all. They're all great. Bastion and Transistor both have 23,000 positive reviews on Steam. I think Pyre is the one that Hades, no one talked about. Hold on, hold on. Hades has over 100,000 positive reviews on Steam. Pyre has 3,000. Damn. Nobody played Pyre. Everybody listening to this right now, you want to play Pyre. And let me tell you why. Let me is tell you why. Cheap? Uh, I mean, you can get it for cheap at some points. Pyre is like a sports game, isn't it? It's like a a strategy. So here's the thing. That's what people have been told in a sense. (laughs) They think they think that Pyre is a sports game because they see the action and it's not it's not wrong per se. Wait, it is a sports game? They don't know. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Let me, let me, I wrote a tweet for this and I bookmarked this tweet for this just for so every time every time I branch about Pyre, which is all the time. Pyre, or as I like to call it, NBA Jam for your soul guide and maximum liberation proletariat uprising federation of the seven races twisted metal winged edition, wing wagon edition with new dog mustache shaving action and encyclopedia of shadow of the classes. What? There's so much of this video game you, and nobody read that off of something it just so saying, right? Good. All right. That's, uh, the fact that you put all that together with NBA Jam has got me kind of interested now. It's, just making sure you did read that off of a document. I have this as a pre-written tweet, and I wrote it off the top of my dome at the time, and I didn't even have time to remember Football Manager in my thing. There are so many things in this game. It's so good. It's so interesting. Here's the thing. You know there. You know how there's a com- there's a codex in in Hades. I've barely read the codex at all. I think partially because Hades does not have a lot of downtime. Hades is a very is a very active heavy game, and all the downtime is between runs. And but all of that downtime is spent talking to people. It's spent, and you want to get back into the run because it's a roguelike, and you're like, I just why are you run. referring to it as like a sports game? Though, like everything I'm looking at, you're referring to it as a three-on-three battle RPG system. Because there's a ball and there's a goal. <laughs> there's a ball. And it's and a three-on-three. Three. It's there's the, like the goal is the pyre. Well. That goal is the pyre. All and needs, ha- I can't. I cannot do. I cannot do the voice that Logan Cunningham does. All, Holy all cow! I didn't magical, even realize it was Logan Cunningham's voice until I saw it in the credit. I was like, "What?" Magical Charles is, Barkley is what we need. He is such a. He is such an incredibly uh, flexible voice actor. But yes, it's a three on three, and there are different characters, and they're all. They all have their different abilities. But there's so much more, and you have. It's so hard. It's such a hard well, game to describe, this? which is why it didn't do as well. And mm. well, and, how about and, this? While Rob chooses his track, you get a little bit of time to come up with a <laughs> way to describe the game. I, I, I real quick, <laughs> I just want to say that I read that entire the, the the Codex book in Pyre. I've spent hours reading that book, and it is fascinating, and I love it. And it's incredible. The Hades one, I will at some point get to, but I haven't unlocked every page yet. I'm, it's just it's, it's not as good. <laughs> It's, it's it's okay. I just haven't read it. Just play Pyre. Wait. Get Pyre. Do get it. Pyre. Just get, just get so the, Pyre. This is this is whole this whole episode is to get our listeners to try Pyre. Try Pyre today. 
Yeah, so the three on three basketball game that you see, that's a mini game because the rest of the game, there's so much more. It's mostly, it's arguably, it's arguably mostly a, a visual novel, but there's also sports ball, but it's not even sports ball. It's about trying to battle it's your way out of sport. hell. Battle your way out of hell like Hades. Is that, that, is that like a super giant female? <laughs> it's like hell battles. Kind of. I mean, it's see. it's the first game that has like a world that's not absolutely falling apart or has already fallen apart, which isn't to say much because there's four games and the first two were like that. And so it was the third game. <laughs> Just play higher. Yeah, but only one of them has that cool narrator. The kid drove a car to the ball. Well, this this well, this, this, this next so this next game is about a demon fighting his way out of hell, and we're talking is about Final Fantasy Ten Three. Now we're talking about Kirby. Kirby's the demon <laughs> who redeemed Kirby's himself fighting. by eating all of the souls. This is Kirby's Adventure for the NES, composed by Hirokazu Ando and Jun Ishikawa. This is the Egg Catcher mini game. Let's get into it. You're listening to Egg Catcher from Kirby's Adventure for the NES by Hirokazu Ando and Jun Ishikawa. Oh, that's my metronome. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> you have a metronome? I thought that was drumsticks. Yeah, yeah, no, because I. Sorry, yeah, the, the, the listeners aren't going to get this, but um, I have a. There's a met. I use a um, uh, uh, audio workstation to record the podcast, and there's a button for the metronome. What's your doll? My doll is Studio One. Oh, you're like the only person I know that uses it. No one uses it. I don't know why. It's it's brilliant. Um, I used to use Reaper Cubase. Gang. <laughs> I, I, I there's a guy, uh, Pernell, um, uh, Matt Morissette. Yes. The previous owner of the Barcade 1984, which sadly went out out of business thanks to the pandemic. Um, he started a podcast, and he's been getting in contact with me on how to do things. Really? And I That's said, pretty cool. I said, get Reaper. Get Reaper. Get and Reaper. Then, and then don't ask me how to use it, because I don't know how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> well, funny enough, I think Matt listens to this show, so if you do listen to this episode, hey, Matt, how's it going? <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, there was, there, was, there was a live stream that we did where I had to go walk the dog, and I was gone for a while, but as I left, I accidentally hit the button for the metronome, and so everybody in the live stream had to hear it. Oh, I remember that. I was like, what the heck is that sound? You <laughs> for way too long. Um, oh, so yeah, geez. so the egg catcher is all about um, DDD. It's just three Ds, right? Day to day. Day to day. I used to say D to D, but then someone told me day to day, and I was like, kind of broke, broke. <laughs> in a, uh, it's in a, in a ring, in a boxing ring, and he's throwing eggs and bombs at Kirby. Why he's throwing the eggs, I don't know, but the bombs. Well, he's a bird. Trying to blow him up. You do the math. You do the math. He's kind of yeah, yeah. He's a bird. He's a bird, man. <laughs> That's right. But uh, Kirby, you, you gotta like you eat the eat the eat the eggs, but not the bombs. The the music. There's another. There's another one, but like the the, the music to it wasn't great. It was like it's like um a crane game, like in an arcade, you know. Oh yeah, you had to pick up the the puffy Kirby's, and like the large one was worth more lives. Yeah, yeah, but it's hard to pick up, which is really cool. Like these are really neat little mini games for a Kirby game. But um, yeah, still Kirby's a Kirby's tough is- little tough little puffball, man. Kirby like, defeats friend, God every yeah, game. Yeah, I'm going to say, listener and friend Brian loves to bring that up, how Kirby games have the... They all... Well, correction, the first one wasn't, but from like the second one on, they all had a very similar format where they always start with something simple like, Kirby loves strawberry cake, and he's ready to have a nice big slice, and he's happy. Oh no, someone stole Kirby's cake! Go get it back! And then by the end of the game, it's like the Dark Warlord Necrocom has come back from the Dark <laughs> Vortex Abysmo. Only Kirby can stop him with the Rainbow Rod of Might, and you're like fighting literal, like, it, 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 pretty much eldritch demons. It's this is like a lot like, of every JRPG as well. Like, a, I started yeah. I started a little bit of Vesperia with my cousin, Tales of Vesperia, and it's like, oh man, someone stole like the pipes for the water main, and you gotta go off and find your ex-boyfriend or something. 
Uh, and I can only assume at the end of the game you fight God like every other JRPG. I've actually heard a weird element about that game. I haven't gotten to the end to confirm it myself, so I'm. this isn't a spoiler because I don't know if it's even true or not, but I think someone was telling me you have to actually fight the guy you were just referring to. And no, the not the reason. boyfriend. Yep, the boyfriend. Listen, listen, He's going you're, down. Your lawful neutral boyfriend and your chaotic good himbo. Like, That's r I don't know what a himbo is, but I like that word. And he's gonna fight God Boy. I'll, it's I'll gonna give you great. a seminar on himbos later. One oh one. It's like here's the, here's the, here's the that one board. needs cracking though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys can stay on the chat after I leave, and you can, <laughs> you can, you can share share a drink with Purnell and, and talk about things. <laughs> talk about might, life. If I do, I might be playing Omori at the same time. We'll see, I gotta get my Omori time. In. Well, I'm gonna turn this 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 track super short, so I'm gonna turn it down, and we're gonna get into the part of the show that we call the bonus round. Bonus. Bonus round. And the bonus round is where we play covers and remixes and arrangements based on our theme. And our theme is mini games. And you know, when we first started the show, I used to I used to come up with like little stingers and like tiny little like little jingles and, and mini songs for the bonus round. And then Pernell would just start singing. And I just stopped finding music. And just bonus let, let Pernell come up with it. Round. <laughs> you did some singing on our last episode, which was so good. Actually, it went back. I don't even remember what I did. That's why. That's how you know us in this oh, improv. Were, I just oh, like it was like, awesome. I forget what track <laughs> it was on. It was so good. Um, yeah, definitely go back and listen to the last one if you haven't done that yet. All right, so uh, Chell, why don't you kick off our bonus round adventure? So, we, gentlemen, and by the, the time they get to reason, me, we'll be fighting God. <laughs> the reason, actually, so yeah, and it's another JRPG. <laughs> God <laughs> dang it. Listen, my one of my games is not a JRPG. Every game from my previous time for mini games was not. Wait, was it uh, Kirby and uh, Spanish? I am amazed. This isn't the wizard involved in the Wii channel. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, it, it's it's hard to keep it up. I, again, six times on. So here's the thing. The reason why I wanted to be on this show is because I've been playing Chrono Trigger with my sister, and there's this one song that's just so much better than it deserves to be, and that song is Gato's theme. And Gato, yeah, oh yeah. Well, here's. I guess we'll wait. How about we, how about we play the show and then afterwards I'll explain the deal with Gato and his please, theme song. Please do, because if you don't, I'm gonna start singing it. Myself. All, right, all right, all right. So you're, you'll be listening to Gato's theme originally by ya, Yasunori Mitsuda and covered by. I think it's the, the string player gamer. Thanks. Is what I've got written down here on the file because I forgot to write that down somewhere else. Um, all right, so now you must fight and defeat God. Do to <laughs> Jeez Louise. <laughs>
I'm playing music with my drink. That was awesome. That was Gato's theme from Chrono Trigger, composed by Yasunori Mitsuda. But that was uh, composed, uh, arranged, excuse me, by the string player gamer. That was good. That was really good. And I was that, really enjoying that. You told me if you ever want to come on, you find a song, you find a theme for that song, and yes, then true. you go for it. And I was like, okay, either chump bosses that are not actually that important, which is kind of a mouthful, and I, there's probably a way to condense that down, or mini games too. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm done for either because I can, I have, I have tracks. I have you tracks in my head. By pilots and oh stuff. my god! Like I can't do this anymore. I gotta. No, no, no! Pilots and stuff was great. Actually, that was so much fun, and uh, <laughs> it was surprising how little piloting there actually was because it's all <laughs> mechs. True. It just all went to mechs. All the stuff. If we have a Redux, no mechs. Anyways, the point is, <laughs> the point is, is that uh, Gato is a. It, he's barely a fight. At the very beginning of the game, there is a there's a fair, and right. you go to this fair, and there are some various things that you can do. Um... And there's this robot. He's this big, like, eight-foot-tall robot made by one of the characters, Luca. And he has this little theme song that he sings. And he's like, my name is Gato. I'm a robot. Defeat me for uh, for 15 silver points or something like that. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and you need the silver points to spend on something. And it's just such a pop. And you fight Gato. And it's, again, barely a fight. It's more of a mini game than a fight. And if I remember correctly, the norm, the battle is normal battle music, but it's but it's like the conversation before and after the fights where you get Gato. Yeah. Like, I think it's just to like yeah. kind of introduce you to the battle system, right? Uh, honestly, yeah, I think so. I think he's like beginning. I think he is the the equivalent of a tutorial fight. No, not even. There's a there's an actual fight afterwards that actually teaches you how to fight. Uh, and um, you fight once yeah. you go to the portal. Yeah, you, you'll fight some like little goblin guys, but Gato. Just exists to have a banger of a theme song, and <laughs> he, he has a little microphone that he pops on and he sings. And um, there is a version of like apparently a Chrono Trigger TV show that was like really really old. And there is a version where a man sings his theme song in Japanese. So sometimes my sister and I will just be like da da silver point. <laughs> <laughs> I also hate myself that it only clicked while we were talking about like his name comes from this song. Uh the um. Hmm? What do you mean? Um, Gato's name comes from the song. Domo Arigato, Mr. Roboto. Gato the Robot. Oh, man. That's not... Okay, but also, that's an English-specific name, because I think in, in Japanese, his name is something different. I can't remember what. Yeah, that might be a, tran a translation. That might be a translation. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but still... Localization. Localization. Um, I was going to say, yeah, we, we did a whole uh, episode on Yasunori Mitsuda, and yeah, this was his first game that he did, and so and he had it's a, a legend. Though. And he had a lot we, to prove. Did we joke about that? How basically he basically he wrote himself a golden ticket after composing Chrono Trigger. Was like, well, he can just come on to any game for like the one headliner track. Well, when he and got get paid a touch for it, when he got out of the hospital, yeah, that's what he did. <laughs> I mean, what happened? Like he worked, he worked himself to death uh, almost. Um, oh my! Yeah, he didn't sleep, and and he got some really bad health issues, and so um, uh, Nobuo Iematsu, who was working on Final Fantasy VI at the same time, came and finished the soundtrack. Um, but it just wow. goes to show you that um, the effort paid off. Though I don't wish that. Hey, level hey, of I'm gonna anybody. cut you off. Don't don't glorify crunch culture. Okay, right oh, that's what I was saying. I don't recommend that to anybody. I'm just saying yeah. it paid off. Like when people say... Yeah, but that's what people say for The Last of Us too. They're like, oh, but it won all these awards. It paid off. It worked out. Like, no, but it shouldn't have crunched to begin yeah. with. Yeah, yeah, you don't award the crunch, but at the same time, you can say you guys did good work. It would have just been better if you spread it over yeah. the course of two years and not six months. Well, he begged Squaresoft to, to do a soundtrack. Um, and so this was his first, and so he he wanted to do. It. Anyway, it's fantastic. I the the, it's the, the very freaking good. Like the, the theme to Chrono Trigger is still, I think, one of the best best pieces ever composed. Um, okay, Pernell, we are up to so to you, Pernell. Unfortunately, Tyranno Castle is not a mini game, so we can't go with that. Hmm. But um, what I can go with is the track I brought to the show, um, and that is from a game that I actually haven't played in a while, but it comes to mind for me a lot which is Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story. Um, I know that one. The track that I picked is the cover to one of the minigame themes that, the, that plays throughout the game. So this is just minigame cover from the game Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story, and it's covered and arranged by an artist that goes by the name of Neon. Neon.
Welcome back. You just listened to mini game cover from the game Bowser's Inside Story for the Nintendo DS and then later remade on the Nintendo 3DS, composed by or arranged by Neon. Um, I've always been a fan of the Mario and Luigi games, and those Superstar Sagas will always probably be my favorite of the bunch. I think Bowser's Inside Story is my second favorite. Because I like the idea of how Bowser takes more of a prominent role in the narrative. And they kind of goofify it by throwing the Mario Brothers inside of his body to manipulate him while he did certain things. Yeah. And the mini game that I liked the most from that. Because there was a bunch of mini games that involved the Mario Brothers doing things inside of Bowser's body to manipulate his joints. Or his bodily functions to accomplish goals. Huh. And it was one mini game that you had to work whenever it was a scenario that Bowser needed to get more so get buffer arm muscles together. Where you had to like knock colored balls that matched the Mario Brothers into like his joint. So like balls would pop out in a sequence. You have to hit them in an order and a rhythm mm. to match. And then they fall get flung into like the muscle. And then they get pumped up enough. And suddenly Bowser's lifting like giant cannon balls and like throwing castles and mess. It gets really weird. But I absolutely adore it. Um, I recommend it wholeheartedly. It was actually probably one of the only games I ever bought. That I actually played through entirely on a freaking Cyclo DS cart. But I did remedy that eventually by buying the 3DS game and not playing through it. It was only, I literally bought it just to say I finally bought this game. Because you I put so much time into it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like I, this game deserves my money and I never bought it. So here it is. Mm. But yeah. um, yeah, Mario, Mario Battle of the Inside Story, fantastic game. And now I got to play Dream Team because I slept on that one. Hmm. I Watch never it. got that one either, but I should have. Um, but I played all the ones before it. Um, but Dream Team? Yeah, I, I played um, Superstar Sire, which is easily the best. I played uh, Partners in Time, which had a little bit of some jank to it, but it was um, it, it was really cool. It was a really cool game. It had a lot of heart, yeah, absolutely. That was Inside Story, which I think was pretty good, but I, don't, I think I didn't like as much as most other people do. Um, and then I just never got around to Dream Team, because time is a jerk and JRPGs are long. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. That's our theme. The green team is the one that I wish I did get into because that had like probably the better of the plots as far as like the weirdness factor goes. It was like, what if Luigi's? What if Luigi believed he was better than Mario and his fantasies became reality? Oh, like it would be great. That would be good because right, it's true. All right, so we are on to uh, my my track. I picked this is a remix from Mario Party One and Two. This is Bowser's theme. Um, pretty straightforward. Uh, <laughs> Mario. Music. Mario Party Bowser. is full of mini games. <laughs> <laughs> the best mini games. I, it's best amazing French that none of us games. picked Mario Party I know. across these uh, until now. Yeah, I, I think we were all maybe maybe we were trying to avoid it, or maybe we just already had some other games in mind. I think I, I I assumed that you all were going to do it, and then <laughs> I was like, "There's so many good songs," and then I got introduced to so many good songs that I didn't know about, and I'm like, "Yo, there's depth. There's depth to this podcast." That was my second time ever on. I think I know <laughs> now. It games. makes you dig right. deep. All right, so we're uh, this is a uh, Mario Party One and Two Bowser's theme. This is uh, arranged by the artist we've had on the show before, Q M U, Q U M U.
Yes, that was Bowser's theme from Mario Party 1 and 2. That was arranged by Q-Mu, Q-U-M-U. And man, I love that percussion at the end. Very, very good. Very, very good. Um, so, yeah. You guys, are, do you guys, you guys play a lot of Mario Party back in the day? Oh, you boy, know the answer I. to that question. I've well, gotten kicked out of houses for that game. Yeah, you got kicked out of my house. The- no, I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> I did get kicked out of your house. Don't act like that's a lie. <laughs> You're like, oh, I see how it is. stole my star. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> you like stars? You like stealing stars? Do it at someone else's house. Go home. Yeah, I'm looking forward to, to a normal times when we can like get together and, and not Mario be worried Party about two. being sick so I can kick you out and of my Mario house. Party 1. That's... Living on the edge, just playing Mario Party One. <laughs> Mario Party One was the most brutal because you could steal it people's was so money. So brutal. Like, also, the that... three player, the the three v one games are like, oh, you lost, you lose, you lose fifteen coins, and everyone else gets five coins. Like nobody, oh, no, no, no. It's nobody big really. Boy, grab bag. You remember grab bag? Oh, dude, I know grab bag. Grab I, bag was the one I that made you lose friends. Games. You would throw your friends in the trash over grab bag. <laughs> Hands down. Did you were I in a stupid you? Bowser suit, and people could just beat you up for money, and there was no limit on how much they could take. If they could did, beat you for $100, they could do it. Did and I you worked the, hard uh, for the, that the money. What, what um, one time I was playing Mario Party. I was like in my 20s at this point, um, and I was at a party, and it was for the Game Receiving Orchestra, part, uh, for which is what I used to conduct. And so at one point, we played some Mario Party, and it was Tug of War. And my friend, oh. my friend Vito was the Bowser, and he was the one. And we're like, we got this. That guy shredded so hard, <laughs> we almost lost. But it went down the full sixty seconds because no one, no one side gave in, and it went to time up. And we drew. The next day, my friend was like, "Hey, I'm like, hey." He's like, "I have something to show you." I'm like, "What?" And he holds up his hand, and there's just a purple circle bored <laughs> into his palm. And I'm like, "Dang!" And I look at my palm. And mine is there too, and it's like a little smaller. And then we just like we just we (laughs) we 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 had we matched circles, and we touched hands. You do know what Nintendo did with that game, right? Gloves. They were they released special gloves for the tug of war mini game. They released gloves for that. Yes, because it was such a poorly contrived game, and people were legitimately injuring themselves doing it. That was a lawsuit. No and uh, that's why on the Wii Shop, which no longer exists, rest in peace, uh, Mario Party 2 and 3 were available, but not 1. Oh, because interesting. They didn't want to deal with that again. <laughs> nope. I remember hearing right, about, yeah. uh, 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 in baseball, there was, a, there was a professional pitcher who, like, called out sick or he didn't play a game because he hurt his fingers in his hand playing Guitar Hero. <laughs> oh, that that. Those are the kind of injuries I live for. <laughs> like, yeah... I don't know, but if I was a professional athlete, I might be probably be more careful with how I play hey, Guitar Hero. I ain't he's, got, he's got his check. He got <laughs> his money. Get the bit, give the pinch hitter a, bit, a chance to some shine a little bit. All right, for more information on the bonus round, go to rhythmandpixels.com. We'll have links to all of these artists' uh, band camps and sound clouds and everywhere where you can listen to the music and buy the music and support all of these artists. <laughs> Thank everybody for joining us on episode 26-5 of Rhythm and Pixels. This is Mini Games Part 2 with Chell. We are hanging out talking about JRPGs for a couple hours. <laughs> Everything but mini games. Everything but the mini games. Oops, all mini games. Um, anyway, Empire. So, Empire. Empire. And by Pyre is what. And by Pyre. And vampires. You don't. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone for, for hanging out with us, listening to some cool tunes, listening to us chat for a little while. I hope you learned something. I hope you uh, hope you enjoyed the music. And if you uh, learned nothing, if you forgot something, then I'm sorry, but at least you had fun doing it. Yeah, um, Chell, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you and talk to you on the internet? 
And so, don't forget that thing you said you were like, I gotta bring it up, but then forgot. Yeah, yes, I, I forgot that's the too. thing. Yeah. All right. Um, I worked on a game called Watch the Space. I worked on it back in the summer, but it will launch. Um, it will launch in February, I believe. I let me, I should watch this space myself. and find out. Watch this space, but it's anecdotal. Um, and so that's launching uh, in a couple of weeks. I am a failure and I cannot find that newsletter fast enough for y'all. But if you want to find more of me, um, I'm Chell Wong at Chell Wong Audio basically everywhere. Um, my my website's ChellWongAudio.com. My Twitter and my Instagram are at Chell Wong Audio. Uh, I have a Spotify which you can find me. There's no easy way to say that link because it's just a bunch of blah blah blah. blah, blah. Yeah. And uh, my bandcamp is chowong.bandcamp.com. So yeah, I'm pretty easy to find. Awesome. And you do some you stream what, every Tuesday? Uh, basically, it was it was kind of inconsistent for a bit because my friend Tiffany was not free. But um, yeah, I do stream at twitchtv audio. Awesome. Um. No, he doesn't have a date on the newsletter. Ah. Uh, well, oh, wait, oh, February 9th. February 9th. All right, coming soon. February 9th. Watch this that space. That's a game that I worked on. That's kind of a kind of confusing thing to say. Watch this, Watch space. this space. February 9th. Watch this space. What's the game? Watch this space. <laughs> Watch this space for Watch this space. Ooh, so watched, in, p- watched in space. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. That's uh, the stuff. Well, um, if you, the listener, would like to get in contact with me or Pernell, or me and Pernell uh, individually or together as a group, you can send us an email. Rhythm and Pixels at Hotmail.com. We like uh, music suggestions. We like topic suggestions, uh, Candy especially. Suggestions. Or if you just want to say hi, if you got uh, recipe suggestions. Um, Booyah Bay. Ooh, and, recipe suggestions. Well, if you just want to say right. hello or say stop it, send us an email there. <laughs> stop. <laughs> stop having her on the show. I'm Cease tired of her. Uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna listen to those emails. Um, also, if you want to learn more about our show, learn more about us, everything that we're doing, get a full track listing from this episode and all of our episode up episodes and uh, access to all of our episodes, go to the website. Rhythmandpixels.com. Um, on that website, there are links to our Discord server, which is a fun place to hang and talk to some other listeners. And also, there is a link to the YouTube um, uh, Rhythm and Pixels radio radio station, which is 8-bit and 16-bit classics 24-7 playing on YouTube. Uh, I've recently updated with a huge playlist of additional NES tracks, Famicom tracks, courtesy of Ed Wilson from the VG Embassy, um, because he's a, he has an enormous database of music. Um, and a huge Commodore 64 selection from uh, all new from uh, Michael Bridgewater, uh, Mibri, um, from the demo scene and from the Forever Sound version uh, video game music podcast from Over the Pond. So thank you very much for that. So check that out. Uh, we're on Twitter, Instagram, and all those other places. Facebook, it's Rhythm and Pixels. It's all one word. And if you want to support the show, just tell people about it, that you like podcasts or that you like game music or you just like us or you like Pernell, you know, or, or you like Rob. Yeah. Or like one or the other. Or you like me. <laughs> yeah. Or you like one of us. <laughs> if you like Chell and you want to listen to specific I'm episodes just... that Chell already is on, then go for that too. Yeah. Look it up. <laughs> look, look all that stuff up. You can also support us in other ways. You can support us at um, patreon.com slash rhythm and pixels. Um, uh, as a member, you get access to a live streamed episode once a month where we were just record an episode in front of you and it's really fun. Or you get a, um, a, a access to um, a prequel episode uh, once a week before every episode. It's just Pernell and I chatting with a guest usually and we're talking about everything else that doesn't end up on the show. Um, it's usually got some cursing. It's usually got some more politics stuff going on, but that's, that's what we talk about there. Um, so the canned yams. Yeah, and you also consume. can get special shout outs during the radio stream and you can put your own little uh, advertisement that gets in the rotation on the radio stream at the higher levels. But we also like to thank all of our Patreon members at the end of every episode. Uh, we'd like to thank Frankly Zappa, Mike Myers, That Nick Walker, Ed Wilson of the VG Embassy, Matt's Holmquist, Michael Jennings, Davy Cakes, Justin Timberlake, Schneider of XVGM Radio, Sonic Medley, Taco, Harold Howard, Dave Taylor, Reinhardt Zelkova, Andreas Milberg, Dan Lauten, Sleepy S'more, Steve Miller, The Autistic Gamer 89, 
Cameron Werma, Christopher Sandstrom, Bobby Arson from One Up Funk, Wicked Sephiroth, Carlos from the Heroes 3 podcast, Michael Bridgewater from the Forever Sound Version podcast, and Brian Pitt. So thank you very, very much for supporting the show. It helps keep everything going, helps keep our, our costs, up, covers all the costs. It's, it's really, really appreciated. So a lot of work goes into the show every week. And we keep doing more and more and more. And it's just seeing your names every week makes us feel good about doing it. Makes us feel like happy yeah. people. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's um, – I don't think I've got anything else to talk about. Next week is going to be the uh, the special Patreon stream of crazy music. I expect a lot of um, boss music. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of boss music played during the episode. Um, and My then, anxiety senses are tingling. And then uh, February 20th, I'll be doing a, um, a gaming marathon, a DDR marathon um, for charity. A DDR-thon? <laughs> uh, uh, raising money for uh, Project Hope and for the Delaware Center for Justice. Um, so that will be um, promoted on our channels. So you can check that out there. Um, Pernell, uh, you were on a show recently, right? It was called Indie Guy Den. Oh, yes. Indie Guide In is a roundtable podcast that I do now. It's usually every two weeks or so where the idea is that multiple people on the show get together. One of us chooses a game and then we all play it over the course of the two week window and then we all get back to have a roundtable discussion. Oh, cool. I am learning how to talk to other people about things I like. It's challenging, but fun. Uh, we recently did an episode on La Mulana, and for everyone who's been listening to the show ever, you know how much I love La Mulana, but I know these how much guys you like La Mulana. La Mulana, and how much did my head explode when somebody said they didn't? <laughs> well, that's fun, um, but it was interesting to actually have that discussion, and I intentionally chose the game for that in, in, in that you know inaugural episode, because I wanted to have that person come back and say, I just didn't like the game very much, because I was ready to go. Okay, okay. Um, Christy just sent me fun. a text. All right. If you've listened to the episode this far, you get bonus content, okay? I wasn't sure if... <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I'm going to pause the episode. Whoa, something's funny. What did it say? Uh-huh. <laughs> what? what happened? Um, all right, I'm going to talk, talk about I'm going to tell it anyway. Um, so we were... Um, it was like the middle of the night. I don't know. It was, I know it was like four in the morning or something. And Christy wakes me up said that she had this horrible dream that Purnell, you were eating um, salad or you were you were getting you know it was um it was like salsa it was salsa that you had in your fridge for for way too long okay. <laughs> and it, and he gave you botulism and you died what really yeah now that's t- she wanted you to ask me if I've had any sal- any salsa recently? No, no, no. She wanted to remind me to tell you the story. But anyway, she oh. woke up and she and it was so like and you know how dreams can be so different. She was so emotional. Um uh, she was crying. She's like Pernell's dead. <laughs> she was she's like, I know it's I know he's alive, but but she was just so sad and then she was she had to like she had to tell people that like he died of botulism. And it was just horrible. in the dream. Yeah, yeah. There was there was some um, there was some some graphic like sick like like sick Purnell scenes in her in her dream. But the, the, ultimately, you died, and she woke up and she had tears. And uh, Aww. yeah, yeah. I thought that was tell her funny. I will not eat salsa <laughs> that has been in the fridge for that long. Now, if it was two weeks, I might risk it, <laughs> but not that long. Not botulism. Oh anymore. man. Um, all right. So anyway, if you listen to this far, just know that we're thinking about you, Purnell. Don't get botulism on us. Make Don't sure cle- get botulism. Clean out those condiments out of your fridge that you're not using. And the and the sad reality of it is that's a real mess is worth sharing because I do have condiments. In that I know. Fridge I, that I came up. I was like, I moved in the house. I was like, you know, I've seen your kitchen and there's some stuff in there that you might have hung on to for too long. <laughs> Yeah, I have a problem uh, where like I'll go grocery shopping and I see something that's cool. Like I want to buy that and make something with it. And if I don't make something with it, it might get forgotten because I want to make something else. So I'll go get other <laughs> stuff to cook. And then now I'm like slowly trying to tell myself, don't buy stuff to eat what you've got. Eat what you got. And it's, uh, I'm discovering things. <laughs> All I'm right. Discovering crazy things. Well, thanks everyone for listening to the show. Thanks for listening to this long if you have. And uh, we'll see you next week. Chell, thanks again for coming on. I'll see you on the next time I'm here. Yeah. It'll happen. It'll happen. Maybe soon. It'll happen. Maybe, maybe soon. Maybe I'll have big. something to promote again and <laughs> actually remember it because uh, I'll have something. I'll, I'll actually, actually, actually be working on it at the time. There we go. It'll Looking happen. for work is really hard. Oh, Nobody needs a composer. That's a scary thing.
And remember, looking for work is very difficult, but perseverance is key. And hope and belief is also key. And that kind of goes for a lot of other things too. Like, uh, But the most important thing that comes to mind for me recently is just the general thought of there's a lot of events going on right now. There's a lot of different ideologies clashing right now and beliefs that are clashing. And while we may not always agree on those things, and we may all feel differently about those things, no one may be particularly telling you that you have to agree with something, but just because you don't agree with it doesn't mean you should go out of your way to express those thoughts, particularly in a rude manner. So it's better to just be positive about something, or if you're going to express yourself, be constructive about it. But if it's just intent to be mean and argumentative, probably keep it under your head. It's just better that way. And this comes from someone who also should do that sometimes, but I'm okay with acknowledging it. So I'm just sharing the wealth. And on that note, good night, drink a soda, but not wine, because, oh boy, does it do a number on the head. <laughs> Man. <laughs>